Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about redshift ramps. Ramps is what redshift calls gradients and they act mostly as you would expect. However, there is a hidden power you can use them for in your texturing workflow. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. Okay, so redshift ramps. So ramps inside of redshift are nothing more than gradients. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you just really quickly how to use them from the ground up if you don't already know. But more importantly, I want to show you a little trick um, that can help your texturing workflow. So real quick, if you're not familiar on uh, the ramps or gradients with inside Redshift, let's come in here and let's create a new material. We'll step into that material. And if you just come here and you search for ramp, you're going to see that uh, there's a ramp node. And on the ramp node, we have what we would expect, you know, black to white. Uh, you can put noise, you can change it from horizontal, diagonal, radial, circular. It's a bunch of stuff that we're all pretty familiar with. Um, so it's, it's pretty bare bones, there's nothing really special about it. Um, so we'll pipe this in here and then I'll just slap it on here so you can see. And you see we have um, a gradient here now. Uh, so that's, that's the basics of the ramp. Um, if you're unfamiliar, uh, but where, where it really I find it comes in handy is you can use it for helping with your texturing in a compositing way almost. So to demonstrate, um, let me go and step back and put this uh, texture back how it was. So here on the sphere, I have a texture I created and it is, um, it comprises of a diffuse pass. Nice over here so we have a diffuse pass and then we have uh, a roughness pass um, for our reflection and then we also have a displacement pass okay so for each of these passes um, they're all black and white as you would expect and um, they're doing their job you know like uh, they're doing what you would expect them to do um, and if we go to our output you know we have a result that uh, we can work with but what if we want to manipulate these, you know, if, if I wanted to, to have this diffuse texture to be, um, have more contrast or have more, um, yeah, black and white, anything. Uh, most of us would probably come to a color correct node. So you come in here and you would put it in your input um, like that. And then you do this and then you can come in here and let's just say I want more contrast. I can then do that. I can take the levels down. I uh, can desaturate it, bring up the gamma, you get the idea. Um, so this works fine, but I find that for this type of color correction, when I want to color correct black and white images, the ramp node is really where you want to be. So to demonstrate, um, let's go ahead and do the same thing, but with a ramp node. So for the ramp, I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to place the output of the diffuse into the input of the ramp. And right away, you're going to see it's going to turn it black and white. And that's because it's saying it's saying anything with a black a dark value turn black and anything with a, a light value turn white. So it actually goes in the output rather than the input. So it's it's saying um, yeah anything that's anything that's dark go to black and anything that's light go to white. So what would happen if you pull this down? So now what you're going to do is if you pull your blacks down, you're essentially creating contrast. It's kind of like if you're familiar with levels, uh, level slider in Photoshop or After Effects, Nuke, whatever. Um, it's kind of the same thing where you're pulling your contrast, uh, excuse me, you're pulling your highs and your lows and your gamma in the middle, and you're actually creating contrast uh, through this. So where this is nice is that you can get a lot of like fine-tuned control of how you'd want that you just really can't get with the color correct node in here. I mean, I think if I think if they had color correct nodes with um, traditional like histograms and stuff, I think maybe you could get there. But to me, this is almost like a histogram. It's like it just makes sense to me, and I can really come in here and I can say, okay, I want to dial this in. I want this to be a little bit more gray, and then maybe I want to pull it here, and I can find these different areas. You know, I can find different areas where I. Uh, need to do my color correction in. So if I want to really dial in where I want to be, I can do that. So if we come here now and we look at this, it's going to be, oops, the same because I did that. I need to plug this into the diffuse. Right, so now we have this, um, which is interesting. I mean, obviously it's not the sexiest look, but uh, it works, you know, it's, it's for demonstration. Um, and then like, let's just say our displacement. So let's go to our displacement. And right now for our displacement, 
Um, we have what I would consider a pretty muted kind of gray pass right now. So I'm not very pumped up. Well, if we wanted to pump this up a little bit, what I would do um, is I would come in and once again, I would grab a ramp node and I would say, I want that to go into the input. And now nothing's gonna change with this because this is a black and white pass to begin with. So when I do this, it's gonna be exactly the same. Now let's say that we wanted to create more contrast again. Let's pull down the blacks, okay? And then let's pull up the whites. Okay, and then let's plug that into our displacement and let's see what happens. So now we get like a much heavier concentrated, let's turn off this diffuse color so you can see it. Um, we get a much more heavy concentrated uh, displacement than we had before. So if we come here and I come in and I put this, you'll see it's kind of taken back and it looks fine, it looks good. Uh, but maybe you want it to be more intense in certain areas. So that's that's exactly what we did. And in particular, you know, I could come in here and I could make this kind of like gray and I could kind of tone it down where I need it to be toned down. And then I can pull this, I guess it would be this way, like this. So now this, just this one area that right here should be sticking out a lot more than uh, previously. So if we come here and we look at our output now, it's kind of hard to tell, but they are actually sticking up more. Uh, it's just that um, with this gray material, it's a little difficult. Let's see if we can maybe pull. Okay, so we're gonna, let's get rid of this and let's pull, yeah, exactly. So now, now I'm just getting rid of all the stuff in between, right? So it should just be these areas now that are actually sticking out. Yeah, and so you can see now we have that kind of finite control that, in my opinion, is really difficult to get with the color correction node. Um, and with the uh, with the ramp node, it's just, it's awesome. I mean, it's really cool. Um, and of course, you know, you could come in here. It doesn't really make sense for this, but, you know, with ramp nodes, uh, going back to the first example, I mean, you can, you can make these whatever color you want. Um, but I find that they are the most useful for color correction. Uh, color correcting of my displacement maps, roughness maps, diffuse maps, etc. Um, so that is my tip for today and I hope that this will help you guys in your workflow and I will see you on the next one.